One, two, three, fuck it. Hello guys, hello everybody, welcome back, I am Anna and today we are going to be reacting to the third episode of the second season of Good Omens. So this season, this show is just so fucking short, I cannot believe this is like the middle of the season. <laughs> I just started this. Um, so yeah, let's, let's watch this. <laughs> he labeled it. He has his own mom. I told you. You make better coffee when you're happier, the girls notice. I'm perfectly happy. That'll be your Lindsay Texan again. I don't believe my relationship is any concern of yours. Obviously not. Oh, that's nice. Somebody's got a sense of humour or an interesting kink. Either way, puts a smile on your face. Open up, police! Good morning, officer. Yes, exactly. I'm a human police officer. Hmm. I thought you probably were. You know, I think I'll just look at mine for a while. <laughs> As you please. Great. I always say the best part of a cup of tea is looking at it. <laughs> this is a human police officer who's just popped in to have a quick look at a cup of tea. Hello, hello, hello. I was recently transferred to London from another human settlement. Oh, yeah. Which one? Work with you, Ang. What is that angel doing here? Jim is in his bedroom upstairs. I told him bookshops are always closed on a Wednesday. As for Inspector Constable... Right, well, we just need to get Nina to do the love thing with Maggie. One fabulous kiss and we're good. I have a plan. Excellent. Can I have the car kids? Do you want to hear my plan? Or... Well, we humans of Earth have a saying. You can only tell if people are in love by waiting a few days because humans are weird and that's how it works. I'll just be here helping to run this bookshop while my friend drives my car to Edinburgh. But I just needed to ask you about your love life. <laughs> Get out now. Personally accurate. It's definitely Gabriel. It's uncanny. Do you think he knows? Probably comes here to stare at it, marveling at his own beauty. Yeah. This isn't good. Well, it depends on your point of view. You say potato, yeah. I say excellent. <laughs> My side are gonna love us. But you don't have to do this. You could be a bookseller. I can't read very well. I don't own a shop. This piss drenched patch is when me and my pal sleep. <laughs> Don't make me more egg. Never better, Hen. Please tell me you didn't. Oh, she absolutely did. Nice, fresh body. It was just this once. There is a stolen body in that barrel. This is wicked. Oh, I'm down with the wicked. Anyway, is it wicked she needed the money? That is irrelevant. Look, I am good. You, I'm afraid, are evil. But people get a choice. You know, they cannot be truly holy unless they also get the opportunity to be wicked. She is wicked. Why? Well, that only works if you start everyone off equal. You can't start someone off like that and expect her to do as well as someone born in a castle. Ah, but no, no, that's the good bit. The lower you start, the more opportunities you have. So Elspeth here has all the opportunities because she's so poor. That's lunatic. No. That's ineffable. Angel, what are you doing? Nothing. We're getting along terribly well together. Do you realize I can feel when you drive the Bentley under the speed limit? <laughs> oh my god. I'm sure you can't. I can. That is so funny. So put slow. your foot down. <laughs> my car does not make that noise. What are you doing to it? Nothing. You've done something to the car, haven't you? I can feel it. I really don't know what to do. <laughs> My car is not yellow. It has never been wow. yellow. It is not going to start being yellow now. I had never seen that car, that color before. Do you ever think, would it just be nice if someone told you what a good job you're doing? Then how? Yeah. I mean, I'm just happy when you don't sentence me to the dung pits for pissing you off. I mean, a day I don't get sent to the dung pits is a good day. I mean, as long as it's a day that nobody rips out my tongue for talking too much. A day when nobody sends you to the dung pits or rips out your tongue for talking too... Am I talking too much? 
thing that happens when objects are pulled together. In this case, they're all pulled downwards because the Earth is the largest thing around. Why? Uh, honestly, um, I don't remember. It seemed like a good idea when we were all talking about it. Um, it would have taken a miracle to render that freshly buried body unsellable. Oh, dear. Something smells rather... I'm not paying a penny for this... this soup. You could try fishing out the teeth. Murderers get hanged. No one cares if we cut up murderers. Excellent idea. More murderers. I'll drink to that. But if you're in such dire need of bodies, why not dig them up yourself instead of making the poor and the desperate do it? Would it Seriously, be better though? for you? Like, morally? Risking grave guns and the noose instead of teaching and studying and saving lives. He's got a point. By any chance, among those present... Listen, I serve hundreds of people a week. I'm not going to remember some... Hmm. Well, yeah. Oh. So, um, as I was saying, big thumbs up from me. Obviously, the firing. Might have slightly overdone it on the whole. <laughs> and I really can't bear it if that young woman. I could heal her. As no, 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 it's the right thing to do. I will book no. I, I, what, what are you. Whatever for? I, I could be wrong, but I think Elspeth's taking wee Murak to Mr. Dalrymple. But, she... but what? I should let her rot in the ground while I starve. Is that what you'd have me do, Mr. MacPhail? Because it is certainly not what wee Murak would want. Well, no. But I'll give you five. Constitution of an ox. Well, I don't need laudanum to kill oh, myself. No dying. Enough dying. No more dying. No more dying. Dying is just, it's just, it's just wrong. Say something that convinces her that poverty is an infinitely wonderful life is worth living. Go on! Come and dig your back up. I have to stop you there. Crowley, I. What the fuck? Should be enough, give her that. Uh, the virtues of poverty. Oh, oh, oh. She is going to be shot by a grave gun or hanged if she doesn't top herself first. Hey! Lordnum! Last time I knew that! Where are I, you? I'm, I'm here. I'm here. That was very kind of you, Crowley. You saved that young woman. Not kind. Off my head on Lordnum not responsible for my actions. Will you get it? You just did a very good deed indeed. Trust me, if hell noticed that little display, I'd already be... Yeah. I'd already be... And that was the last... <clears throat> um... Hello. Um, I'd like you to call the telephone in my bookshop, please. Phone? Jesus it's on my desk. Christ. He did? Phil's bookshop. We probably don't have what you're looking for, and we wouldn't sell it to you if we did. <laughs> I think I... You haven't actually been selling any of the books, have you? Not a one. Blessings be upon you. And your phone. And Twitter and Grinder, whatever they happen to be. I mean, I've never... Well, we didn't. It was the power going out. Come on, I'm an 
Such a hard brain. I'm not your type. You have no idea. <laughs> there will come a tempest, and darkness, and great storms, and the dead will leave their graves and walk the earth once more, and there will be great lamentations. Go on. Every day it's getting closer. Gabriel hiding in the bookshop, haven't you, Chris? Sorry, mate, I'm a stranger to myself. Hello! <sighs> He's in there. You think so? Hello, customer. And all the forces of hell will declare war. On me? On your friend. Worse. That's worse. You have no idea the trouble you're causing, do you? No. Or yes. Or... No? Yeah, I'll tell you something, Jim. If any harm comes to Aziraphale because of this, I will. Yes? Oh, it doesn't matter. It's too late for that now, isn't it? Um, this smells like danger. We always knew that they were gonna get caught. You know, somebody was going to find out somehow about Gabriel in the bookshop. Um. I am kind of surprised that she's the only one that it is so certain about it that he's in there. And heaven, they were in the fucking bookshop and they were completely like clueless. Like they knew that two of them were involved somehow. But like hell, knew, hell knows that Crawley has him in the bookshop. Like they know him so fucking well. And I am very scared for a seer film because. Obviously, I don't want anything to happen to him. He, I, I feel protective over him just as a Crawley does. That moment where um, Crawley made made it rain, so Nina and uh, so Nina and Maggie could, you know, fall in love and all that. That was um, that was very cute. I mean, you know, he knows humans. He's like, just get them wet. And then magic, <laughs> basically. It was very funny to see his plan actually working. You know? What was he saying? Um, so yeah, love wins. <laughs> the bit of um, a CRFL going below 30 kilometers per hour and turning the fucking car yellow, that was hilarious. Hysteric. That was like so fucking funny. <laughs> Um, for some reason I didn't quite feel that much in touch with today's um, jump to the past, you know, those bits have always been my favorite of every episode, you know, back in season 1 too, like every time that we jump into past, into to, to look at the past history of Aziraphale and Crawley, I am in love. And this one I wasn't that much a fan of, um, but I mean it's okay. So, yeah, those are my thoughts on this episode. This is it for today's video. Thank you very much, guys, for joining me. Have a great day, and I'll be seeing you around. Thank you so, so, so much to David Cleveland, Eric, Sheriff JT, Tishiar, Topher B, Les Reese, Thomas Janis, and Zero Max.